Campari is brought to you by... You deserve roses. You deserve roses that will last you at least a year. So, of course, the Kempire has partnered with Rose Forever yet again. I know what you're thinking. Like, what do I need roses for? It's not Valentine's Day. It's not Mother's Day. You always need something beautiful in your home. Or you might need a beautiful gift to someone that's moving into a home or going off to college. It's never too late to get something beautiful for your home, especially something that has a great price ships worldwide and will last you at least a year it's worth the money we've partnered with rose forever yet again so check out the description for more details on how you can get beautiful roses for yourself or someone you love happy libra season look the virgos showed out during our cameo promo and i know all of you that are libras want a special shout out from me maybe you want a birthday shout out maybe you want an anniversary shout out or maybe you just want to speak to me in some shape or form or you need advice we can do all of that through our partners with cameo yes i'm on cameo Get a a personal birthday shout out, anniversary shout out, or just a personal message from me today on Cameo. More information on our Cameo will be available in the description along with everything else. You're listening to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Network. Hey, (laughs) y'all. Oh, goodness. What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday. I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, We did go live first. We did go live first on Twitch and Twitter, but there was no volume there. Uh, But now there is. Now there is. Shout out to everyone watching on TikTok as well. This is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives of Orange County. I hope you guys enjoyed the Real Housewives of Orange County. I hope you also enjoyed our Real Housewives of New York and Salt Lake City recaps this week. Be sure to check those out if you missed them and let me know what you thought of it. We have four Real Housewives uh, shows recapping every week. I'm going to have to combine some of them because I, I can't. I, I like I like them, but New York, you're not that great. <laughs> Look, there were some moments from this Orange County episode because I was like, because, you know, I, I I twerk on a fence. But I said, Shannon is not as innocent as she portrays herself to be. But I still soft. I'm a little soft, little, little, little soft to her. Okay, just a little bit. And just when I was about to turn on her, she she drops the smoking gun. And I'm like, did your mouth drop when she she um, pulled out the receipt on Alexis? Ooh, <laughs> did, my mouth was because remember, she said she felt like Alexis had something to do with that that lawsuit from years ago. And then she dropped the receipt. I was like, oh, shoot. So just when I was about to turn on Shannon, I was just like, wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. Okay, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that and so much more. But first, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. It is a subscribers only live chat on YouTube. Shout out to those of you that are watching on Twitch, Twitter, and those of you watching on Facebook. We really do appreciate you guys. Samia says, did I miss a recap last week? No, that's when we had the Brooke Ashley and Taria Faison on. That's when we talked about Salt Lake City. That's when we talked about Real Housewives of New York. We talked about Real Housewives of Dubai. We talked about Real Housewives of Orange County. So there wasn't a separate Orange County recap. I cheated last week. <laughs> Let's get into this recap. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Happy Friday, guys. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. It's starting to finally feel like fall here in New York City. Not sure I'm happy about it, but a part of me is happy about it at the same time. Like, I don't want to get too cold too soon, but it definitely is a chill in the air. There's definitely a chill in the air. I don't know about you guys, but I don't mind it. I like spring and I like fall. (laughs) I just don't like the, you know, we've been really dealing with a lot of, like, warm weather here in New York for an extended extended period of time. So now it's just starting to feel like fall. I got my pumpkins. If you follow me on YouTube, I show you my little pumpkin that I put on my kitchen counter. I was like, I'm starting to feel a little festive. Like if I got the pumpkin any earlier, I feel like it would have been, first of all, did. <laughs> but also, I feel like it would have been, it wouldn't have felt like fall. But now it's starting to feel like fall. Like I should have put on a sweater, but I need to unpack my sweaters and things like that. Lord. No more shorts. Whoa, 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 campfire. 
No more shorts weather until I go to Los Angeles. Los Angeles, I'll see you on November 20th. So make sure you get your tickets for our Kempire After Dark live experience at the Bourbon Room. More information on that is available in the description. Speaking of today's live show, I want to just say thank you to Factor Meals for sponsoring today's live recap at the Real Housewives of Orange County. You know I love me easy and delicious, and you know I love to eat. So Factor Meals gives us something wonderful to eat and quality to eat. In under two minutes, okay? And as speaking of fall weather, sweater weather pairs perfectly with savory fall foods. But with your busy schedule, sometimes it's hard to eat the way that you like. That's where Factor comes in. Their, their chefs do the shopping and the chopping to bring you fresh, never frozen, fully cooked meals right to your doorstep. All you have to do is heat and eat. The meals are dietitian approved, so you, you have... Uh, you So you know you're getting the nutrition that you need along with the fall flavors that you crave. What I love most is that they have something for every lifestyle from Gourmet Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, and so much more. I, I love the add-ons especially as well. If you want a discount, though, head on over to factormeals.com slash Kempire50 and use code Kempire50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month. That's code Kempire50 at factormeals.com slash Kempire50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. More information on Factor Meals and everything Kempire will be available in the description. All right. <sighs> Look, ah. <sighs> Where do we begin? So the ladies are packing and getting ready to go on this trip to London. But before they do that, Heather pulls Jen, Shannon, and Gina together to get their mammograms done. They flash back to a scene where Shannon says, I haven't had a mammogram, mammogram, mammogram done in 10 years. I was like, what? <laughs> what? In 10 years, Shannon just celebrated her 60th birthday. That is irresponsible. Sidebar, we usually do a fundraiser for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We haven't forgotten. We're going to do one. It's not too late. It's only the 11th day of the month. We still have 20 days to to um, raise some money for, for the charity that we normally do every month. So stay tuned for that. After the live, I'm going to hook it up. Oh, But I'm so glad that they included this scene. And can we normalize women coming together and doing sort of like these sort of events around getting the mammograms done because maybe that would make it easier for people to actually do it. So I love that they opened up this episode with this this get-together that Heather planned for everyone to get their mammograms done. We find out, Jen says, well, I did find a lump five months ago. I understand she's scared. Look, look, look. I understand she's scared. And she, and she tried to use the excuse, you know, she's, she doesn't want to bring bad news to our children. But ma'am, if, if let's say it was something that you should be worried about, the early detection and treatment would prevent bad news. So, Jen, stop. Luckily, we find out it was nothing. It was, it was something from surgery. But Shannon, 10 years since you had a mammogram, you're 60. Sorry. I know she hates it when people keep bringing up her age. You look great for 60, Shannon. But you're 60 and you haven't gotten a mammogram since you were 50? Madam, Gina just turned 40, so that's when when she started doing her mammograms. But Shannon, 10 years? I mean, luckily, luckily, because I was like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Luckily, everyone was fine. Everyone was fine, except Heather. Heather, I mean, she's fine. However, however, she has dense breasts. And in my, in my conversations with women, there are a lot of women that have dense breasts. However, she, her risk factor for cancer now is at 39%. 39% and it should be like around 12%. So they go back and, and they get an update. And yes, it's very scary getting this information because Gina had to go back for a sonogram and she didn't have, Shannon didn't have to do anything extra. She didn't have to do a sonogram this time, even though she has very dense breasts for her age. Fine. Jen was a little worried, but she's fine. I thought the same thing as Heather when everyone came back. I was like, is no one going to ask Heather how, her, how hers went? I said, maybe I missed it. But then Heather mentions it. I was like, oh, I th- so I didn't miss it. No one asked her how she and look, it could be because Heather always has everything together. She even put this event together, so maybe people just didn't think of it. 
But still, like, no one was just like, and Heather, you're good? No, no one, not one person thought to ask Heather. And I felt for Heather. I really did feel for Heather in that moment. Anyways, we do see that in this scene, they talk about the text message that, what's her name? Alexis responded. Let me p- pull up the text message because I do have the text message here in regards to Alexis' response to Shannon's text message in regards to the trip. <laughs> so this is her response. And uh, Alexis, I think you think that this landed the way you think it landed, but it really didn't land any which way. It just sort of makes you look, as you've been looking, ridiculous and and thirsty. So she responds to Shannon. Hi, Shannon Bador. Since you're hosting this amazing trip to Europe with our friends, surely you can scrounge up the funds to pay my future husband his $75,000 that you borrowed and owe him. Safe travels. Heart hand emojis. Really? (laughs) Honestly, it didn't land the way she thought it was going to land because no one really cares. No one cares if you're on this trip or not, Alexis. We did. We barely even thought of you. <laughs> this trip. Did you think of her? I didn't think of her until they they brought. I almost skipped over this particular point, but I was like, "Oh, I have the text message. Let me bring it up." Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. So everyone's packing for the trip. Shannon's packing for the trip. She's talking with her daughters. Her daughters will also be in Europe at the same time. She's going to meet up with her daughters. Fine. We see Tamara packing with Eddie, and of course, she's talking about how she ran into Jen, and she said she apologized to Jen, and Eddie was like, "So what did?" Jen say and she was just like she was very stiff and <laughs> and she was just like okay we need to talk about it or so, something like that I can't remember what she said but basically it wasn't like it's fine we're mo-. no Jen very much like what we've said d- you can't trust Tamara because this is how many times of Tamara turning on Jen and Jen really hasn't done anything to Tamara and Tamara w- likes to say look you know let's just leave the husband out of it and just have our friendship how do we leave the... You leave my husband out of it. Jen is not bringing anything up about Eddie. It's you. <laughs> Anyways. But in the scene, she refers to Ryan as a little B-word. Okay. In simultaneously, as these scenes are happening, Jen FaceTimes with Ryan and talks about running into Tamara. And she said that Tamara did apologize, but she was just like it's just words with her. Like, she's, she does this over and over and over again. So the group, we you know, we have these little moments right before they are getting ready for their trip to London. Everyone's packing and getting ready for their trip. So they all end up at the airport, but the first to arrive are Heather and Katie. And as you know, Heather and Katie are not in the best place. Okay? And it's a little awkward. It's a little awkward. And Heather's like, I guess my my prize of arriving early is being here with Katie. I don't understand why it would be awkward. It shouldn't be awkward. What happened between them, although Katie, I feel like it was a terrible hill to die on. I'm just like, it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It shouldn't be awkward. I think that they could get along fine. We saw them get along a little bit later on in the trip. And even Emily was surprised. She's like, look at you guys having like a full-on conversation. Okay, fine. Let me take a sip from my coldest water bottle. Okay. Cherie says that I wish they didn't bring her back. She can go. Tamara? Damn. Danny says, this this is pre-recorded? What do you think? (laughs) I was pulling up y'all comments before, so why would this be (laughs) pre-recorded? Deborah says that uh, Heather made it awkward. She did. She did. But I'm a, I'm a little, like, on the fence because I I can see why she would not see it for Katie. Like, you're coming for my marriage, and I don't even know you. Okay? Sarah says, why is it okay to call a man a little B-word if anyone called a woman that it would be a disaster? Make it stop. I agree, but they do that a lot on Housewives. Doesn't make it right, but they do do it a lot. Melissa Faye says that um, Heather has a real hate for Katie. I, like I said, I'm a little on the fence with that because it did feel like Katie was coming for her marriage. And look, I can't sit here and say how I would feel if you came for my boo because you know how, as a tourist, we're loyal to our boo. So when I do have a boo, it might be a situation if you come from a boo. Okay? And I don't know you. 
it, and you're just sort of doing this for a show. I mm. I wouldn't say I would hold a grudge, but I'm not gonna be like buddy buddy with you either. Jean says Heather holds a grudge. I think she'll get over it by next season because no one's gonna be interested in a fight between them and them not liking each other because it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like there are people that don't get along and you can see why they wouldn't get along. I could see Katie and Heather getting along. I think Heather just refusing to open up to it, to the opportunity. And part of me doesn't blame her. Just saying. Anyways, so the other ladies arrive. Um, no offense to JetBlue, but I was like, damn, are we on a bunch? <laughs> We're taking JetBlue to London. I didn't even know JetBlue went to London. Is that new? <laughs> but okay, they're on the plane. We see them on the plane. Look, first of all, when when Shannon arrived, Heather had to scream to the entire airport, happy 60th birthday, Shannon. And then she does it on the plane. She goes to the, the loudspeaker and she says, happy birthday, 60th birthday, Shannon. And she's single. And what was Emily doing brushing her teeth at her seat? Go to the bathroom and go brush your teeth. She's so nasty. Like, there's parts of me that loves Emily's humor but there's been a couple of nasty stuff that have happened this season between her and Tamara and now you're at your seat brushing your teeth and then washing it down with with Dr. Pepper as Katie said what in the Ohio is going on Ohio she said it not me I don't know if that's how y'all do (laughs) look I don't know if that's how y'all do over there okay hey Sensi what's going on Deborah says JetBlue really I laughed I would look, and no offense to JetBlue. I will take a Jet a JetBlue flight. I just felt like, okay, are we on a budget? Maybe it was the best, best budget they had, best one that they had. Okay, maybe. So Emily's brushing her teeth at her seat, slobbering. Gross. <laughs> look gross. He- Here's the thing. You know what I really do like about what Heather and Shannon are fostering? More so on Heather's side. Despite their issues, I really feel like Heather has been there for Shannon and has really been sort of like a cheerleader for Shannon. And I know I say this now and we see what happens at the end of this episode of Real Housewives of Orange County. But I'm like, but I'm kind of like, like she really is rooting for her friend. Or do you think she's taking a dig by every time saying happy 60th birthday? I mean, it's a blessing. She looks great for 60. I mean, she looks great overall. Scherzer says Emily's gross. <laughs> Jupiter says that Emily is so combative. It's crazy. Oh, God. W. Berg says, what about when she had a sip of her dog's bowl? Don't remind me. Like, there's some nasty stuff. <laughs> love Monica says, I love Katie. I hope she stays. I like, I like her, too. I really do like Katie. And I love the fact that Jen and Katie have really formed a real friendship. Like, best friends. Which is crazy. Crazy to me, but, like, really cool at the same time. Excuse me. Hold on. Oh, yes. I, I'm. You guys have to remember. Britt says, when Emily drank after her dog last season, I knew she was nasty. Mmm. Jean says, Kempire, I adore you, but I disagree. You don't have to, to start off by saying that. You can just say hey, you disagree. I think Heather is a sniper from the side when it comes to Shannon. I look, maybe... Maybe, but in this moment, I'm basing what I'm saying on what she's giving. And what she's giving is supportive. But like I said, could it be nice, nasty? In regards to happy 60th birthday, Shannon. Let me make an announcement on the entire flight. Happy birthday, 60th birthday, Shannon. And she's single. Lonely and 60 and single. Maybe. I'm going to take it as she's celebrating her friend. Okay? She's celebrating her friend. Mm. Look. Mm. All right. What else happens? It, okay, we're off the flight. What I do enjoy about Orange County and Beverly Hills, they're not fighting over rooms. All the rooms were fabulous. Everyone got a nice room. Whatever. All right? So, Shannon gifts the group scarves and hats and things like that. And Tamara's like, why is she giving away gifts when she owes John Jansen $75,000? Do you think that Shannon actually paid for that? We know she's not paying for this trip. I mean, that comment would come from Tamara. But 
So she says she should focus on Tamara says that. Then Heather and Tamara have a conversation about the Jeff Lewis interview. So first of all, y'all do know that Jeff Lewis and Shannon are friends. So it's not surprising that she went on there to to speak her case. But what she says on Jeff Lewis basically confirms that this was a loan. Did did you guys think otherwise that this wasn't a loan, that it was a gift and John was just being petty? I don't know if I thought it was a loan. I, I, I never really thought about it. I Even if it was a loan, she said that she was willing to pay it back. That's the thing. Like, to me, it was like, okay, who cares? It, okay, it could have been a loan. When you're in a relationship, do you say, oh, it's a loan? Not necessarily. But she was willing to pay it back. He didn't want to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And here we are. But she says on Jeff Lewis, basically, that it was a loan. So Tamara and Heather are like, is it a loan or not a loan? Is it a loan or not a loan? So they were confused by her Jeff Lewis interview. And then Heather brings up when... Shannon came to her room back in Sonoma. Rewind the tape. Remember when I did my recap? I said I found it to be weird of all the people that Shannon would go to with this picture after her accident and talk about this would be Heather. Yes, we know that they've been building something, but of all the people on this trip, you go to Heather with this? I told you back then, I thought that was weird. I was like, hmm, something feels off about that. And Heather brings it up and she's like, you know, I think it was weird because she kind of came to me and said that, you know, he had this video and she showed me that picture. So she felt like it was she was that Shannon was being a little manipulative. I agree. (laughs) I agree. But I thought that from back then when we first saw it. Rewind the tape. Look, rewind the tape. All right, so the ladies are getting ready for for dinner. And Emily and Gina are talking, and they're talking about Jen's glam. So Jen has gotten glam while in London town, okay? And they're like, don't you have, like, bills to pay? Gina's is like, this is what you do. You you get glam one time, you learn from them, and then you you don't pay for glam anymore. You've learned. And she admits it's a scam. It's a scam that Todd set up. And, girl, the glam that you be doing for yourself... Like, when you see Jen come out, it's like, you could tell she had her glam done professionally. You see Gina, you know, stomping in, and you're like, we could tell you did that yourself. (gasps) Whoa, 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 Gina. (laughs) Mind you, she's saying all this in her confessional, looking that infamous confessional look. Like, girl. Like, you're not selling us on your idea of stealing glam. You're not selling us on that because, girl, I, I look... I'm going to have to get Brian in that $16 million and have him pay for glam because I don't want to come out here looking like Gina. Right? You don't want to look like Gina. <laughs> nope. Keep doing what you're doing, Jen. I don't care if you, you got evicted. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. <clears throat> she Look, she got evicted, but she's now in a mansion. Mm. All right. Moving on. So they're they're concerned about how Jen Jen is paying for glam. Jen then discusses her issues with Tamara and and the things that she's been saying about Ryan. And Katie admits in her confessional, because Tamara put out there that whole stuff about the FBI and and his associ- Ryan's association with this guy, she said it's put a little bit of a sprinkle of a question mark around Ryan for her. And that's the thing, especially when you put it out there or you put it out there on a show like this. Now, we're we're all looking at Ryan with the side eye. However, he doesn't help himself. He doesn't help himself. Like when he was talking to Katie's husband, trying to let us know what he does for a living. And we were all like, huh. <laughs> and look, his vibe is very scammy, but I can only wish the best for for Jen. OK, I can only wish the best for Jen. Because she, I, I like her. I don't necessarily like Ryan. <laughs> but we shall see. Do you, do you think they will actually get married? Has Ryan ever been married before? I don't remember. I know he's dated a lot of married women. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, according to Eddie. So, has he ever been married before? I can't remember. I can't. Nasser says, absolutely, Ryan is sus. Hey, Vigilian, it's okay that you're late. It's all right. You can always rewind the tape. <laughs> you can always rewind the tape. All right. 
Guys, if you haven't already, be, be sure to like the video. It's easy. It's free. Happy Friday. This is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives for Orange County. Yes, we are live. Don't forget to like the video. It's like I said, it's easy and it's free. Moving on. So moving on. What else? Okay, so the group dinner. Let's talk about the group dinner. So they all sit down for this group dinner and Tamara brings... Okay, this. you guys let me know if you thought the same thing. Tamara bringing up the mammograms and then asking Heather about hers. Why do I feel like Heather put the battery in Tamara's back? Why do I feel like Tam Heather told Tamara about how she felt? And that's why Tamara asked about the mammograms. Anyone else felt like that? Look, I know not every housewife is calculated, but I did have that thought. I thought to myself, I was like, did Heather mention this to Tamara to bring it up on camera? And would it be the first time that Tamara has been used? She literally admitted to it that that Shannon had her do stuff like that before. So she's more than willing to actually do it. <clears throat> so... She brings it up, and then Heather gets emotional. And she's like, you know what bothered me is that no one asked me about my results. And I forgot who said it. It was either Shannon or Jen. They were like, oh, I thought I thought you, you were good. I heard everyone, you know, happy about it. And she's like, no, that was, I think, Gina's. And I was like, oof. But I felt for her. I did feel for her. Because no matter if she asked Tamara to bring it up, because I do feel like she did, even if she did, she did feel hurt about it. Gina making this about her, she's like, oh, you know, she asked me to bring up stuff. Why wouldn't she call me after the mammogram and tell me? Girl, girl, th your timeline w was like weeks or months in between. We're talking about probably a couple of days in between the mammogram and this trip. <laughs> okay. So you making this about you and how Heather did not, and they talk about this again next week on next week's episode about Gina feeling like you should have brought it up to me. She felt a way you didn't ask how she was. Just own it and move on. Just saying. So Heather does get emotional about it. And I really felt for Heather because honestly, I thought the same thing. I was like, is no one going to ask Heather about how she, how hers went? She, first of all, hosted this event. Secondly, I, I would want to know about every person. How did yours go? How did yours go? How did yours go? But Heather, I think, is so used to being put together and people are so used to her being put together that that's part of the reason why they didn't check in on her. Okay? Mr. Mel and the Magic says, Heather did mention it, so Tam brought it up. I think so. Foxy says, Gina, sit down. Shaking my damn head. I just don't understand how Gina turned this into something about her. Just own the fact that you didn't ask. Why didn't you ask? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Melton Magic says, in the words of Wendy Williams, clap if you think Heather should suffer. Really? Auntie Kim says, Tamara is exhausting and deplorable. <laughs> Damn. But I will say this. In this conversation with Shannon, because then it turns into a conversation with Shannon and what she said on Jeff Lewis and the lawsuit and things like that, and whether it was a loan or not, I have to say she Tamara did give us context because I know all of us love us some Shannon Bador, Shannon Storms Bador, but I told you I've heard that she's a terrible behind the scenes allegedly, but I also don't think she's so innocent. I do think that she was manipulating Heather in in bringing this on camera. I do think that she's asked Tamara before to bring things up on camera and then pretend like she didn't know. I do believe that. I do believe Joel Cambooster. <laughs> <laughs> about her being a nightmare behind the scenes. I can uh, I can believe that, but also think that John Jansen is a terrible human being and Alexis is thirsty to be on television. Those two things can't exist together. Right? Look, right? Mm. Uh, Timon says Heather was doing Tamara's dirty work. I think they were doing each other's dirty work. So it leads to them confronting Shannon about whether this was a loan or not. Then she revealed that she re she did receive a promissory note from, from John Jansen in regards to this loan. Apparently, John Jansen now wants an like a, a public apology along with the $75,000. It doesn't work like that, John Jansen. Take your $75,000 and go. Like, why aren't we suing this man for extortion? Now you want a, a, an apology? You better take your $75,000 and go. Or don't take anything at all. Like, he's becoming annoying. 
Do you think that she should make a public apology? Because he cl- he claims that she made him seem like he was the poorest person in the world and blah, 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 blah. You better take it. First of all, you need to take your $75,000 and be on your way. Because now you're just, now you just want to punish Shannon. And look, Shannon, this is your karma. Oh, <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? This is your karma. Because look, I don't think Shannon's innocent. For you to be with this man for four years says a lot about your personality too, Shannon. It says a lot about your personality. And Alexis, I wish you luck, but I don't. I wish you the worst. <laughs> I wish you the worst. Like Joe Cam Booster. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm being facetious. Angelica, thank you so much for the super chat. Angelica says, did you see Shannon on Watch What Happens Live? She says something about John saying that he was going to accept the money, but he wants her to talk about good about him. Yes. I didn't see that, but I I did see a clip from my friends over at CC Loves You on Instagram. I saw that that she had said that. Thank you for the super chat, Angelica. Would you apologize? Do you think Shannon should apologize? Why? Because because think about this. Even before Shannon said anything on this show, he still wasn't willing to take the seventy five thousand dollars. How do we know if she does all of these things? Basically, embarrass her in front of everyone. She does all these things. And then he's like, oh, well, now I want this. No, sir, you better take this money and go before I sue you for extortion and blackmail and file charges. Honestly, I think she should. Don't you think she should? Where are the attorneys? Miss Bernice, thank you so much for the super chat. Miss Bernice says, Tamara ain't ish, and she's the devil. <laughs> Damn, not the devil. Look, I, I, look, this is probably the one week Although I do agree with you in regards to Tamara, but I appreciated the context that Tamara gave us in regards to Shannon. Shannon's not innocent either. Shannon's not innocent. But so as I'm watching Shannon, you know, fight Tamara and and Heather, because Heather's just like, I feel like you were being manipulative by coming to my room in Sonoma. Jen, with her innocent, you know, Bambi self, is sort of like, she's just coming to you as a friend. She's just no look because even I watching this was like no Shannon why are you going to to Heather there's plenty of people on the trip that you could have went to that you're closer to but you're coming to Heather Jen's like no that she's just coming to a friend she's looking to a friend why didn't they invite Vicky on the trip <laughs> like they should have invited Vicky that would have been nice anyways so after Tamara chimes in. Basically saying, because, okay, Tamara did say that Shannon admitted to her that this was a loan. Uh, Do I trust Tamara? Not really. But literally, Shannon told on herself on Jeff Lewis that it was a loan. So what are we arguing about? It was a loan. But this man wants her to apologize. He doesn't want to sign an NDA. Okay. So... They talk about that, and then Tamara says something, and then Shannon's just like, you know what, I'm not doing this. And she gets up and she walks away from the table. I thought she was going back to her room, but she ended up going to the bar. Okay? So Gina follows her, and that's where I I switch again. Here I go twerking on a fence. I switch again, and I'm like, Shannon pulls up. She's like, you know, when I was sending this text message to Alexis, I found the old text message where Alexis basically said that her and her ex-husband were going to be sending a cease and desist to Tamara and Shannon. She never sent the text message to Tamara. She sent it to Shannon. So Shannon says that she had the text message where it proves it. So she reads the text message and we get to see the text message. I was like, well, this was the smoking gun. And of of course, Shannon wanted to make sure that she said this on the show. Yeah, look, I mean, look, we didn't know whether or not that there would be proof. So I'm glad from the very first episode of Real Housewives of Orange County down to one of the last episodes, we finally had the proof that we needed. So Alexis was behind that lawsuit. But is that the real reason that Shannon was upset with Alexis? It might have been a part of it, but I think the bigger part is that her future, that that Alexis is da- uh, dating her her. Alexis is with her ex-boyfriend. That's her future husband. (laughs) If that makes sense. So, 
I thought that was an w- interesting way to end the episode because I was like, okay, Shannon, I'm back. Team Shannon. <laughs> Not that I was ever team anyone because you know how I how I do. But I was still sort of like, Shannon, you're, you're walking away from this argument because you've been caught in a lie. I will agree with that. You've definitely been caught in a lie. John Jansen is still trash. Alexis is trash as well for getting herself involved and using this as her storyline. However, I I appreciate that we've come full circle. We've literally come full circle with the information that she indeed, she indeed was involved in that lawsuit that was brought against Tamara and Shannon. I was I I was not expecting that. I thought maybe at the reunion we would get some sort of legal paperwork pro- proving that Alexis was a part of it, but the text message said it all. Cuz here's the thing, Alexis knew knew what she was saying. She knew exactly what she was saying in that moment d- during the first episode. It's like my name was on on wasn't on any of the legal documents. She knew what she was saying cuz she knew that she wasn't on any of that stuff. So she could easily have her husband do it, even though she's the motivation behind it and involved in it and giving the okay for it. But she's like, I'm not on the paperwork. I'm not on the paperwork. Thank you for reminding me, Angel. I forgot to mention at the dinner table, we did learn a little bit more about Katie because when they were talking about the mammograms, Katie talked about how she's going to Korea and you know being adopted, her not knowing her, her health history because that's so important. She did reveal that she's going to Korea with her family to meet her mother, who's 55. Her mom had her when she was just 15 years old. So Heather has like, she's so engaged in the conversation. Emily's like, what is happening here? And she and Heather's in her well, first of all, Katie says, you know, Heather is cold, cold, like what is she? I wrote it down. She said that Heather is ice cold polite. And then Heather says in her confessional, She's like, well, Katie's history is interesting. Too bad she's not. (laughs) Too bad she's not. These two do not like each other. I thought maybe during the season we would see see why uh, more than just a paparazzi photo. But I don't see what else happened besides the paparazzi photo and Heather looking her up and down at, at a party. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Should we take some callers? Should we take a couple of calls? I'm going to drop the call in link for the general audience. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitter. Hey, Twitter, what's going on? What's going on, Shantae? What's going on, everyone on Twitter and Twitch? I appreciate you guys being here. Shout out to everyone watching on, on YouTube and Facebook as well. Shout out to our, our folks on TikTok watching from behind the scenes. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the Kempire Podcast. I have a couple of episodes that I still need to upload in regards to our live recap. So, Yes, I know you all are waiting to hear those episodes because some of you like to take them on the go or listen in your car. I will be uploading them probably over the weekend. I, I can't promise today. Okay, I can't promise today. Let me drop the call and link for everyone in the live chat. So keep liking the video, guys. We're almost at 200 likes. Okay, and there we go. Let me know if you want to call in and share your thoughts. I'll give you guys a few minutes to to, to get into the, lot, into the uh, lineup backstage. How would you guys rate this week's episode? Let me see how you were rating this episode on YouTube. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Wow. With almost 300 votes, you guys rated this episode. We're almost at the end. You guys rated this episode between 7 and 10, 80% of the vote. It's I hardly ever see that, that amount. With th- almost 300 votes, you guys rated this episode between 7 and 10, 80%. Wow. Keep voting, live chat. Keep voting. And if you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know how you would rate this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County from 1 to 10. I honestly, because of that smoking gun towards the end, I'm going to give the episode a 9. And and I like the fact that they were calling out Shannon because I think I like to see layers to a person. And although we do enjoy Shannon... I, I like the fact that they're showing us, well, she's not 100% innocent, but John Jansen is still trash, and so is Alexis. And it also showed me that in this moment, Tamara gave me a little context in regards to Shannon. And I do believe that Shannon uses the women to to do her dirty work on the show, but the same can be said for, the same can be said for Heather as well. 
But definitely, I think I'm going to give it like a nine, a nine out of 10 for me, for me. Okay. All right. Let me see. Okay. Oh, okay. Look, you guys had things to say. Y'all had things to say. Shout out to um, everyone in in the uh, backstage. We're going to bring some folks up to share their opinions on the Real Housewives of Orange County. But first, I just want to say thank you. We had a super chat. And guys, we appreciate the super chats, the Venmos, the cash apps. You guys checking out our sponsors like Factor Meals, our coldest water bottle, discount code Kempire10, getting your merch like this hat. Okay. This is embroidered. Just want to let y'all know. Embroidered. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get to the super chat. Leroy, thank you so much for the super chat. Leroy said, I laughed so hard when Tamara said Shannon looked like she was in jail. Hashtag Team Tamara. Here's the thing. When I looked up and I was like, wait a minute, I have to rewind it. I was like, oh, she does look like she's in jail. <laughs> but in that moment, I think it's just hard for people to be like, come on. We're trying to be serious, people. She's upset and she's walking away. But it was funny. It was funny. We can laugh. <laughs> All right. Let's get to some of the callers, guys. Let's bring up Wendy first. Wendy, what did you want to say about the Real Housewives of Orange County its latest episode? Hi, Campire. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. I'm off today. I took off today. Today is um, Black Girls Take a Day Off Day. Yes. I almost <laughs> forgot. Yes. So I took a day off. But I'm in the bathroom twisting my hair. But... You're supposed to take the day off. I didn't see the whole. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the whole episode. I stopped because I saw that you was live, and I said, "Oh, got to stop." Oh, uh-uh. my here's my thing. Alexis is the Lulu. If you think that Shannon was going to allow you to go on her trip after what you're doing to her and saying to her, mm. and the and the thing is, she's offering to sit the pay back the money. Just don't talk about her. Yeah. So it's 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 something. It should say something about your character. Not wanting to take that deal. And that's all I have to say. He wants to punish her. Huh? He wants to punish her. Right. And so that should look at him sideways. You're doing it yourself, John. You don't need Shannon to make you look bad. You're looking making yourself look bad. And Alexis should be paying attention. mm Mm-hmm. So that's all I got to say. Let me get back to this hair. Love (laughs) you. Enjoy your day off. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Bye. All right, we're going to get to some more calls. I forgot, it is Black Girls Take a Day Off. I forgot the official name, but I complete, I reposted it this week to remind y'all. So shout out to every, all the Black Girls taking the day off. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Podcast. As always, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And for everything Kempire Radio, head on over to KempireRadio.com. 